Hello everyone! Last week we began the story of Lys Heart, in which we talked about its discovery, the connection to Alun and Oros, while also preparing the vessel for Illidan's rebirth. This week we're going to finish up the storyline, we're going to finish the tour in Illidan's history, but before we begin, a spoiler warning. Part of the Illidan novel and the end of Nighthold, it does play a part in this storyline, so if you still want to experience those moments for yourself, run away while you still can. We left the story last week, with Illidan leaving his people behind and making his way to the palace to offer his allegiance to the Queen and Sargeras, with the intention of betraying them and finding the enemy from within. He was actually able to shield his real intentions, but Sargeras is no fool and he offers to reward Illidan for his loyalty with a mark of favour, a mark that will at the same time aid in the fulfilment of his quest. Illidan looked up. For the first time, the barest need of uncertainty, it graced his narrow features. Behold the legion's power. No matter how hard this world fights, it will fall. Our eyes deceive us. The army that marches on Azeroth is but a whisper of the Legion's true strength. Beyond this army is another, and another, and another. Even if we defeat them here, it will mean nothing. We are doomed. Unless we find another way to fight them. And I will find that way. The flames burned out Illidan's eyes of destiny, replacing them with magical ones, as well as branding him with magical tattoos. Sargeras had truly claimed Illidan as a creature of the Legion, but these changes, this new power, that was just the start of it. During his transformation, Sargeras also granted Illidan a vision, a simple truth. He saw how the Legion in the Great Dark, it conquered planet after planet. Azeroth was but one amongst millions upon millions of worlds, each in turn fell to the demonic onslaught. Sure enough, some of them were able to stand up for a while, but the Legion always came back stronger than before. Sometimes, worlds were not simply destroyed, they were conquered and incorporated into the Legion structure, adding more soldiers to feed its war engine. One small speck amongst millions, yet that was just one reality. There were a near infinite amount of universes, new ones were born each minute from the decisions made a heartbeat before, and in all of them, the burning Legion marked destroying world after world. In every one of them, the Legion march triumphant. The burning Legion, invincible, unstoppable, dooming the universe to eternal darkness. This vision had been meant to convince Illidan that the Legion was invincible, that it was pointless to oppose the will of Sargeras, and that the best and only thing that he could do was join the Legion and have a say in the remaking of the universe. With his eyes burned out for seeing the truth, Illidan still did not falter even under the gaze of the Lord of the Burning Legion, Illidan remained resolute and defiant. He remained who he was, and he tried to do the unthinkable, put a stop to the Legion invasion, and, despite his own plans backfiring, with the aid of the Knight of Resistance, they were successful in preventing Sargeras and the Legion from conquering the planet, at least for that moment. They did lose the Well of Eternity in the process, Illidan did fail in winning over Tyrande's heart since she loved his twin brother, and to top it all off, Illidan had seen the truth of it. He knew what none of them understood, that the Legion would come back to take another bite out of Azeroth, and he wanted his people to have the power to fight back. For this, he decided to use his vials, filled with water from the destroyed Well of Eternity, and he decided to make a new one. What have you been doing with your hand in the well? Now as you might imagine, the rest of the people were not too happy about this, since they had just fought a war because of the original well, and they feared that a new one, that it might attract the attention of the Legion once again. His people didn't understand, they didn't know what he knew. As he was making the well, they caught him in the act, it had then lashed out, he killed a few of their people, and he was branded a traitor. Instead of executing him though, the Nidos decided to imprison him instead, and for millennia, Illidan spent his time in darkness, under the watchful eye of War the Maya Shadow Song, until the events of Warcraft 3. Just as Illidan had always known, the Legion had returned, and Tyrande, she decided to set him free and recruit his aid against the Legion. Tyrande, it is your voice. After all these ages spent in darkness, your voice is like the pure light of the moon upon my mind. The Legion has returned, Illidan. Your people have need of you once more. 
There was no remorse, no apology. She had set him free only to be used as a weapon. And the worst of it all was that Illidan would still give it to her. He went out and absorbed the skull of Gul'dan, increasing his power but also making him look that much more like a demon. He was able to banish the Dreadlord Tychondrius back to the Twisting Nether. And despite saving their forest, Melfure and Etoronda, they did not agree with his actions. They banished him from their lands, to which Kill Jaden found the Demon Hunter since he had a job to do. His minion, the Lich King, it was getting out of control and he wanted Illidan to destroy the Frozen Throne. Illidan does his very best, but his plans are prevented by Malfurion and Maiev, who wants nothing more than to put the betrayer back into his cage. She's so hell-bent on this mission that she lied to Malfurion and told him that his beloved Tyrande that she was killed by Scourge troops instead of simply swept away by the river. Despite all that had happened between them, Illidan would never do anything to harm Tyrande, and he tells his brother that together they could save the High Priestess. Tyrande is saved, but the same can't be said for Illidan. He has failed Kill Jaden, and Kill Jaden does not reward failure, so he decides to hide on Outland. With the Warden Maiev, she quickly goes after him to recapture her prey. In Outland, Illidan, together with Kilfa Sunstrider, Lady Vush, and the Broken Akama, they're able to defeat the Pit Lord McFarradon. They claim the Black Temple and the title of Lord of Outland. It's at the Black Temple where the next vision is shown. Akama, your duplicity is hardly surprising. I should have slaughtered you and your malformed brethren long ago. We've come to end your reign, Illidan. My people and all of Outland shall be free. Boldly said, but I remain unconvinced. The time has come. The moment is at hand. You are not prepared. Come, my minions. Deal with this traitor as he deserves. I'll deal with these mongrels. Strike now, friends. Strike at the betrayer. This vision shows the moment where the evil so-called heroes of this world, they dare to strike at Illidan's Stormrage. This right here is the true betrayal, since up to this moment, Illidan has still been hard at work trying to fight back against the Legion. He's been training more demon hunters, he is captured by Yef, who tried to put him back into his prison, they did some serious damage to the Legion troops on their very own worlds, and he even has located and managed to establish a link between Outland and Argus. This is how the Illidan novel describes that very moment. He steeled himself and invoked the last anchor for the spell. Despite his wariness, he felt a flush of triumph. The link between Argus and Outland was established. The portal could be activated once the pattern was finished. He had but a heartbeat to enjoy his victory and then the attack came. An astonishing power grabbed his spirit, but it was not an evil source that grabbed him. It was an Elder Naru, a being of holy light and possibly the eldest remaining in these universes. As all Naru, he worked against the Legion and he had waited for Illidan, for the universe to throw up a champion in the face of those who would destroy it. It could have perhaps have picked a better one. The words emerged from his mouth before he could stop them. I do not think so. You are what you are. All your days have forged you into that. A weapon aimed at the heart of a great demon. I would like to think I'm somewhat more sentient than my warglaves. That is what makes you dangerous. So the universe has appointed me to slay kill Jaden. His tone was sardonic, but hope flickered inside Illidan. Perhaps if what this Naru said was true, there was some chance of victory after all. The swirl of lights indicated a negative. No, your enemy is far greater than kill Jaden. Greater even than Sargeras and his Burning Legion. Wonderful, Illidan said, as if they were not strong enough. The suspicion that this was all a subtle mocking trap set by Kill Jaden, it sidled once more into his mind. If this was a trap, his struggle was ended. If it was not, then things were even worse than he had fought. The Void is a more potent foe by far than the Burning Legion. It is the ultimate opponent of the Light. It will take all the peoples of Azeroth and Outland United to oppose it. Before Illidan could defend himself in any way, a bolt of pure light blasted from the Naru. It struck his empty eye sockets and filled them with a golden glow. Illidan braced himself for a blast of agony that did not come. His vision shimmered and faded, and he found himself looking down on a terrible battlefield. Amid mountains of corpses, a winged figure battled at the head of the legions of light. A golden glow surrounded his warglaves. He cleft demons asunder with mighty blows. The soldiers surrounding him gazed up in awe and wonder at their leader. It took Illidan a moment to realize that this being's features were his own, transformed, his eyes glowing fiercely. 
As Illidan watched, the winged figure rose above the battle, defying gigantic entities of darkness, creations of the evil of the void. A halo played around his head, his body began to glow brighter than the sun, and from his outstretched arms, ray of light emerged to strike down his foes. You will defy death, the Naru voice said as the vision faded. I have seen this. Whatever you were, whatever you are, a champion of light is what you will be. You will be a hero, said the Naru, but there will be a price. There always is. The Naru then sends Illidan back to his body, where he wonders to himself, could this be true? Was there really a path to redemption for him? He had never dared to think such a thing was possible, and yet the Naru believed it would be so. He believed in him, and just for a moment, he let himself believe it too. Behold the power of the demon within! The Naru has shown him a vision where he's flying above the battlefield with a halo playing around his head, using the powers of the light against the darkness of the void. A nice future to have, but right now he's about to lose his fight to Maiev. The forces of the Black Temple, they've been defeated, Akama has betrayed the betrayer, and he stands alone since his trained demon hunters, they're on their way to Mardum to collect the Sargerite Keystone, which has the power to open portals to all demon worlds. All demon worlds, including that of Argus, a powerful tool when you have to take the battle to your enemy, but we're unaware of all those plans, and we bring the betrayer down. Is this it, mortals? Is this all the fury you can muster? Their fury pales before mine, Illidan. We have some unsettled business between us. Maiev... How is it even possible? Ah, my long hunt is finally over. Today, justice will be done! Ah... <sighs> It is finished. You are beaten. Rondo. The world is only as meaningful to us as the beings that inhabit it. Even in the end, Illidan saw her as clearly as the first time he laid eyes on her. He never lost sight of his world. You must ask yourself, how far will you go for yours? Zera wept when it touched her consciousness in the great dark, for it saw Illidan's fall and it saw us, our shadow, casting a dark pall over his body. It felt hatred in our hearts as it corrupted our minds. It was in fact not Light's heart that needed preparation, it was in fact us. We needed to know the truth of Illidan and his intentions. Yes, we were oh so very naughty for attacking the betrayer during the Burning Crusade. Now the reasoning behind the assault back then, it's always been a bit vague and unexplained, but let's not forget that the Naru themselves, they were perfectly happy with assisting us during the attack. Now I'm all for bringing Illidan back into the story, right? But I don't believe that they really have to push it to make him look better than he actually was. There's no mention of making a new well because he had such a lust for power, there's Broxigar giving him his respect, there's Sonarius pushing him away, the vision of a halo above his head. I don't think that was really necessary, I think Illidan as he was was perfectly fine. But whatever, when the time is right, Zira will call upon us to begin the hunt for Illidan's soul, and his rebirth will be the story of our redemption. Oh, Illidan, we're simply not worthy. So fast forward back to present day, to the Legion times, where Gul'dan and the Legion, they assault the Vault of the Wardens, and they steal Illidan's body. Maiev lets the demon hunters free, who were imprisoned together with the master, and together we fight back. Yet Illidan is taken away all the same, all the way to Blackrook Hold, where they separate his soul from his body. The demon hunters then work throughout their campaign to make contact with Illidan's souls within the Twisting Nether, and it's Illyria the Soul Eater, who's discovered that Illidan's soul was plucked from the Nether, stolen, and taken to the Underworld, a place known as Helheim. Ysargeras 
Ghost truly plans to use Illidan's body as a vessel for his own return, the returning Illidan's soul to his body is integral in preventing the Dark Titan from returning to our world. We must craft a soul prism powerful enough to hold Illidan's boundless chaotic energies long enough to transfer it into the Naru, and to do this we'll need lingering soul fragments from powerful beings found all across the world. After going about claiming 80 of these fragments, it's time to venture forth into Helheim itself, we defeat Helia and bring the betrayer's soul to Light's heart. Now Illidan's physical body, that was a little bit difficult to track down, but they figured out that it was taken into the Nighthold of Suramar. Gul'dan is making his final preparations to the Nightwell in order to use its power and usher the soul Sargeras into Illidan's body. The only way to stop them is to return Illidan's immortal soul to his own body, so we give the vessel to Ketgar with the following instructions. When Gul'dan attempts to tear the sky asunder and bring the Dark Titan into our world, call forth the power of this vessel and release Illidan's soul into his body. The Archmage will do his best, while of course we have to do the hard work and lead the assault on the Nighthold. We do just that, and at the top of the Nighthold, Katgar does the thing. No more distractions. I have work to do. Surrender! I may yet show mercy. Time to return the demon hunter's soul to his body, and deny the Legion's master a host. Burn from within. Gul'dan, Lord of the Shadow Council, is brought low, but not everything goes according to plan. You topple a pawn and presume to challenge its master? Such arrogance! You are not prepared! On Mythic Mode, an additional phase happens in which the demon within pops up and has to be subdued before Illidan makes his entrance. I speculated that this demon might be Asenov, but keep in mind that I couldn't find any solid source stating this is the demon within. On stream we also discussed this a bit, and some interesting ideas came up, like an embodiment of the powers bestowed upon Illidan during the War of the Ancients, or a part of Sargeras himself. Now I don't know for certain what exactly this demon is, what it's supposed to represent, but either way, the demon within is defeated, Gul'dan has failed at providing his master the proper host, and Lord Illidan has returned. <laughs> Lightheart, the ultimate sacrifice of the army of light that's hopefully still fighting the war against the Legion, it has fulfilled its goal. There are some interesting bits here and there that I can't wait to see explained further, like the origin of the Naru connected to Elune, how does that work and what exactly is Elune? There's time not working the same the deeper you go into the Twisted Nether, so how old are Trellian and Lyria by now and how come they're still alive? What kind of creatures does the army of light have and will division with Illidan or even Anduin Rin or even a dream from Arator come to fruition? So much awesome stuff still coming up, but for now this is where the story of Light's heart ends. Thank you all so very much for watching everyone, subscribe if you like my videos, leave a like if you enjoyed this one, and until next time guys, see ya!